my pleasure pleasure to welcome you all the fourth day first session of this workshop and uh, this session again delivered by professor sanjeev so far is the second session in sequence and this session will have more of practice on particular kind uh, at attention of co and po with the help of some example so if you have come with some question paper with some syllabus you can uh, ask questions but my request to all of you will be at least for next one hour let uh, the valued speaker to speak and uh, let him present his uh, uh, approach of uh, uh, you details how to attain or how to show the attainment of the CEO or PO uh, based on uh, different parameters, maybe direct and indirect mode. And then after, in between, keep your questions sparking questions. And then after you start interacting, you may in between keep on writing questions in the chat window, or then after that, you may unmute questions one, one by one in your slot, and then keep asking questions. So let's uh, start with this. What's the sofa? Let's uh, start with this. So okay, thank you, Professor. One hour. Let's not uh, interrupt the speaker. Let's see, let him continue and present the encapsulation. Yes, sir, please. Okay, thank you, Professor Fuda. And yes. thanks for defining the protocol also, because in computer science, we usually say protocol has to be defined first, or yes. yes. the communication will take place. Thanks for defining those. Uh, maybe yesterday we started with a for outcome based education. As I said, the, one of the component of that is your uh, curricula and from curricula onwards we drive everything a, the moment i got a curriculum i had to see whether it's a balanced curriculum whether it's take care of all my program uh, outcome pos there or not and then in case it takes care of that how the key i'm taking care of that is that is through our courses which we give let's say in case we want you to attain, have a, attain, they have certain attainment value for all the 12 uh, POs. We have to think about what are the courses which will be I teach so that those POs can be attained. Now for attaining those POs, what we need is we have, let's say we have got a 20 odd courses which we would like to have in the semester. So we, what we have to do is for those 20 courses, we have to see what is the expected outcome of that particular course. Now, then that means we have to think about attainment for the courses. How exactly I can think about attainment for the courses? There are different methods which we have talked about yesterday. Maybe one of them is your evaluation part. Maybe we say it's a, a continuous evaluation. And there is an end term examination which is there. These are the usual components which are there. A, and the continuous evaluation has got a, maybe you got a quiz, maybe you got your sessionals, maybe you got your a, assignments, practicals, or all other components. They form the basis for your uh, evaluation there. Now, as I said, ke attainment is ke, let's say I set up a target. Maybe that is a based on my previous historical background. Or in case I'm teaching it for the first time, this particular course, I can set up my target. Okay, this is what I like to attain for each one of them. Now then I try to work out on this, how exactly this particular attain uh, targets I could meet. There can be certain gaps. Now these gaps will lead you to the continuous improvement. I think this is what we talked about in our uh, yesterday's lecture where a, you have to complete one loop, a, starting from making the curriculum to delivery of the curriculum to evaluation of the uh, students and again feedback to go for the continuous improvement. Yeah. So this is a, then, as I said, a, there are direct assessment mechanisms which are there for CO attainments and there are indirect there. So this is what we'll do. Maybe this is one example which we have taken from one of the institute who's affiliating institute. Uh, uh, there, uh, that is an engineering institute, maybe most of you might be from, not having the background of all of you, but I suppose uh, most of you might be there from some affiliating institute only, uh, where you got your affiliation with the university. 
So this is what I thought I'll discuss with you how the we go for CO attainment through direct assessment. So what input required is, uh, let's say input required is your internal assessment marks and the end semester examination marks, maybe for all theory, for all practical session, maybe uh, considering some of the courses there, maybe six semester, third semester, eight semester for every student. Now this particular CO attainment is there corresponding to each other student there. Then the weightage of internal assessment and end exam semester examination of theory and the practical sessions of the okay, What is the uh, weightage for each one of them? Maybe this is what I was trying to explain you what okay, your internal senate or your internal body or in case university is there, they are the ones who should define this how exactly you are going to evaluate a student. Let's say some of the students, you just evaluate a 20% internal assessment and 80% external ex, uh, exam there. Or these days, some of the evaluation are 50% uh, internal, 50% external. So these are all the parameters which are there for the evaluation or the weightage which we define in the curricula. So that's another thing which we have to think of. Okay, while we define our curricula, we have to see how exactly this thing is defined. Let's say these are some of the weightage as per curriculum defined by one of the institutes there. Maybe they have gone for a, a the, the, what I want to drive you at is okay, this is what we say is the continuous improvement. What they have done is okay, for the batch 17, 18 pass out batches, internal assessment was for theory subject is a 20% and end semester is 80%. And for the practicals, 60% and a 40%. Maybe they might have realized if we are not doing justice with the students, maybe there must be some feedback. If we are not doing justice with the students while we just give them the 20% internal assessment, it should have got a more weighted. So that's what, what they did was, okay, they observed this particular aspect for two years and they shifted to improvement over there. This, this is a case of a continuous improvement which can be shown by uh, an institute there. The internal assessment based on the feedback, feedback can be from all your stakeholders. Okay, your internal assessment should be more. They made it 34% and end semester, they reduce its weightage to 66%. Fair enough. Okay, this is what we say are a component of a continuous improvement. And a practical sessional subjects, they say it's a 60 and a 40. Okay, again, they have kept it at 60 and a 40. They never said, okay, that means students or the faculty were satisfied with this particular weightage to be given, but not with this particular weightage to be given for the evaluation there. So this is what every institute has to define how exactly they are going to evaluate their students there. Because your attainment depends upon this particular part. Now then we try to define the level of attainment. This is the first step which you have to take. Okay, how do I define the level of attainment as far as the students are concerned? Okay, let's say we thought of, okay, there will be four level of on the scale zero to three. Okay, let's say I would like to say, okay, uh, I got a scale of zero to three. And consider to measure the attainment depending upon the quality of the result of a class. Okay, let's say result of the class can be internal results, first results can be uh, end term results. Because uh, let's say I can't have this sort of a system where university, because this is a practical thing. University will never give you students marks in each of the question there. What best university can give you is what is the marks he has scored in the exam there. Uh, maybe this is another level of transparency which is coming these days is showing the answer sheet to the students. So, so we define some sort of a threshold there. Okay, in case, let's say, okay, there are students, there are only 10% of the students who are scoring more than 50% of the marks. That means teacher couldn't do much there. In case more, most of my students are scoring less than uh, 55 or so, Okay, this is what we have to define a predefined threshold of percentage of the marks. Maybe the, that's what we see. These percentage may be decided at the department level and duly approved by the department council. 
hey, what we say is, hey, let's say, yesterday there were there were a number of questions there. Hey, how do we decide what is our threshold for each one of them? This is what NB expects you to define. Only thing is you to document it. Hey, let's say your department decides based on the feedback from the faculty, based on the feedback from the students, that this is the level I had defined as my threshold for deciding whether what is zero, what is one, what is two, what is three over there. But only thing is, it has to be, this particular process which we say hey, about our threshold has to be a documented process only. Not that hey, the moment team comes, you're not able to show this. But this sort of a transparency has to be there because obviously we have to transfer the documents to if we have to transfer the information to the faculty to the others also that's why we thought in case we can think about at the department level it gets approved and approved by the some department council if it is there maybe in some other system as i said it's a senate which is there or we have got a departmental program academy program and committee there dapc is there so there is some committee there who will approve this particular so this is what we say is the definitions. A for internal assessment of the theory subjects, a in case a there are zero to sixty percent of students scoring greater than sixty percent of the marks. That means there is hardly anyone who is scoring more than sixty percent marks in a particular subject. Then my attainment level is zero. This is what has to be communicated to the Teacher there. In case this is your, and in case between 10 to 40 percent students scoring greater than equal to 60 percent, then I say the attainment level is one. If it is 40 to 60 students scoring 60 percent, then two and 60 to 100. If it is greater than 60, then we are saying three. So this is what we see is my attainment level, which is defined by the my any of the governing council there, any of the body there who will decide this. And this has to be uniformly there. And then for the end semester examination, a, for in case of the theory subject for the end term, in case there is only 10% of the students scoring 55%, I say it's a zero. Again, for 10 to 40%, I say it's one. It's a 40 to 60, I say two. And 60 to 100, I say three. So this is what I have to define as my attainment level for my various a programs there or it can be institute level also or it can be department level let's say one department feeds a mechanical engineering students they are usually not of a very high quality let me say they or i'm not uh, partitioning any students that's only example i'm trying to give you i can say in case they score more than 50 percent still i like to give them the same so this is what a department level decision or a Institute level decision can be there. Uh, usually, it is a institute level decision which are there. So this is what I have got in my definition of a attainment level for the theory courses there. And same way, I define the attainment level of a practical or a, some other sessional subjects which are there where there is practical involved. In case, because what we expect is in practically skill development thing students should score high marks. So I say, okay, okay zero to 10, 70% uh, is zero, and 10 to 40, 70% is one, 40 to 60, 70% is two, and 60 to 100, 70% is three. So this is my, for my internal, because usually you have got an internal assessment for your practicals also. So I can have this sort of a thing there. And uh, maybe the, you might be having this sort of a system whereby you have got an end semester practical exams also, which have been conducted by some outsider. Because uh, maybe in institute like ours, we have got a total internal system. Whereas in some of the affiliating institutes, we have got a uh, external examination systems also still. So in case it's like that, it is, you can think about some sort of a attainment level which you define. Now, your major aim is you have defined the attainment level. 
Now, based on this internal attainment level, you have to work on. Now, what we do is, a, we just competition of uh, attainment for each of the subject and the course there. For each subject, the attainment level is formed using this particular table. Table two there. Okay, this is my table two through which I found this sort of a attainment level. And table three for the practical session. Attainment level of the score of zero is termed at X1 for internal assessment, X2 for the end semester examination. You see attainment for each subject is calculated as Okay, what is the weightage I define for each of them? A W1 is the weightage I had defined for a particular component, and weightage 2 is the defined for the second component. If I look at W1 and W2, we have defined in the table 1. If I look at our table 1, there we have defined this particular level set. A, my W1, W2 are that defined there. So this is what we see, a CO80, W1 into X1 plus W2 into X2 there, where W1 and W2 are the weighted as per table 1. Now, let's say now we go for the attainment level. A corresponding to each of the course, I define, okay, let's say, a for internal assessment of a theory subject using table 1, percent of students scoring greater than 60%, let's say there are 54. Then my attainment level is 2 and a percentage for end semester examination of theory subject, percentage of students scoring greater than 55 is 38 and my attainment level is 1 there. Now then I calculate the CO attainment level for the particular course a W1 X1 plus W2 X2 is equal to Maybe you make this calculation and you get this particular as well, you have 1.2, right? So this is what we say, computation of a attainment for a subject there. So corresponding to each of the course, we define this. What is the attainment level for each of the course? And same way, we compute the a competition of a CO attainment for the practical or session subject. Uh, we just uh, we define percent of the student scoring seven, greater than 70 percent. We say course seven, the 70 student who scored more than 70 percent. And then their attainment level in this particular scenario is three. And in this particular case, if it is a more than 65, we say attainment level is two. And then again, I calculate this particular CO attainment level for the course as this particular value. Sir, what is this W1 and W2? I mean, are these the, these uh, components of... Uh... Yeah, yeah, W1, W2, as I defined here in my table 1, this is the weightages which has been defined by the uh, respective institute. So let's say for my internal assessment, I got a weightage of a W1 as weightage for this particular component. A theory subject. Uh, maybe you have to mute yourself. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, maybe what we got is as I define theory subject is 20%, W1 is 0 0.20, and end semester is 0 0.80. As I said, okay, while uh, we go for the continuous improvement, maybe in that particular institute for 17 18, they had defined. It has 2080, and for the next year, they defined it as 34 and 66. Uh, this is, these are the values which we're using here. I hope this is clear. No, sir, it's clear. Okay, thank you. So this is what we do, computation for the CO attainment for the theory subject as this, and for the uh, practical subject, we have got this sort of a, a calculation there. Let's say in case of a course, which was a practical course, 70% of the student have scored 
70 students scored more than 70 percent so this is 70 so my attainment level is three and students scoring greater than 65 55 attainment level is two i calculate this particular value w1 x1 plus w2 x1 which comes out to be 2.6 sir this uh, internal assessment uh, means both quiz assignment all those things yeah internal assessment that's what we see is continuous evaluation continuous evaluation is where we have got a sessional we have got a, a quiz we have got uh, your uh, assignment which you are given all these are nothing but a internal assessment uh, so uh, uh, we actually give uh, quizzes surprise test and as well as uh, home assignments right so these are the three, uh, three types of assignments that have been given so yeah. for each each of the three different uh, uh, assignments i give i have to calculate like this uh, no uh, oh, uh, for each three of them you have to define because ultimately out of 100 marks which we define only 20 let's say university or anything we they kept only 20 for the internal assessment part. so corresponding to that you have to and normalize it for the 20 only. That means ultimately you should be getting this particular marks out of 20 because ultimately it is a 0.2 factor which you have to define for that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And uh, these your attainment values we use it for getting the PO and the PSO, PSO's attainment. Now then we have got a methodology for PO attainments here. The attainment of through direct assessment, what we got is, let's say there is one course there. A CO attainment of each subject for this semester, a program, we have got a program articulation matrix. I, yesterday we talked about this program articulation matrix where we have got all these ESOs and POs there and there may be one, as I said, there can be one course which may be meeting three or four POs there. I think this is what I was emphasizing upon there only. Yeah, there can't be one course which will be meeting all the POs and PSOs there. Let's say there is one course which meets only two or three POs. And uh, there we define, it may be, uh, there may be very strong association there, there may be mild association there, or there may be weak association there. That we define with the term three, two, one there. So this is what we call it as a program articulation, uh, articulation matrix, CRJs. So these are all the values there. Uh, this is what we had defined, maybe this is what Professor Grover might have told you also. Okay, you have to think about okay, corresponding to each of the course, what is the PO it is meeting or a PSOs which we have defined it is meeting and up to what extent it is there. If it is extent is very high, we say it is meeting, its value is three. If it is a, a average, we say two. If it is a very small thing which is meets, then it's one over there. Maybe you might have taken some example for this. I take this solid. Uh, if I look at solid uh, mechanics or solids, if there is a PO1 which is a uh, engineering applications there, maybe I, then it is a meeting very high, maybe PO2, PO3 and PO4, it is meeting to the lower level. And it is up to continue up to all the 12. Maybe I, we are due to scarcity of space, we are not put all the 12, but this is up to 12 and these are your PSOs. Now, this is what we say, this provides the correlation. A CR is a correlation between each of the POs there on the scale of one, two, three, between each course and each of the POs and the PSOs there. A, we have got a POs, we have got a PSOs there. We rate between one and three. This is again a departmental activity. A, while you define your curricula, you have to define this also. All this PO1, PO2, PO12 has to be defined. Okay, what is the <laughs> linkages which are there, uh, correlation with my PO, with my course there? A, if let's say the PO12 has a zero correlation, that means mechanics uh, of solids, it doesn't correlate to my PO12 there. 
Now then we calculate this the attainment of each of POs for GH scores through direct assessment. PO attainment is calculated using the correlation CRGI and the uh, CO attainment which we have defined below. So this is what we have got. PO attainment is uh, CRG IJ corresponding to the uh, IH scores. What is the GH? A J is 1 to 12 or 1 to 15, if I got 15 there, then okay, what is the value which is there corresponding? Okay, corresponding to each of the cores and corresponding to that particular CO ATJ there, we divided by 3. This is, again, this is some formulas which has been defined by some of the institutes there. In case you would like to develop a better methodology there, you can think about better methodology, but it should be be documented and it should stand the scrutiny of the law. So that means K, uh, for I is equal to 1 to N is the number of POs and PSS there, I is and J is I to M, M is the number of courses uh, from uh, third this semester, this semester, so how I and J are defined. And uh, that's what we say in case of no correlation or a cell is empty in table six, there will be no PO attainment in this particular scenario. So this is what how we define a, this particular aspect. A program, we have got a program articulation matrix. This means this is what we define while we design the curricula. There. And then we, we try to find out a attainment level for each of the courses there, what's the attainment level based on the internal assessment and based on the external uh, evaluation there. We try to work out on that and then we try to work out upon each one of them. Maybe you could have, maybe one can add more complexity to this in case somebody says, because external examination, I don't have got a control. Maybe I'll take that example also. But internal, I can define a, this particular assignment which I'm giving, this will take care of PO1, this particular assignment will take care of PO3, and this particular assignment will take care of PO3. I can just define this particular uh, mechanism in a more complex way. Because this is one of the simplest uh, mechanism I thought I'll discuss with you, but you can make it more complex way. Now, then the value of PO attainment thus calculated or tabulated below as per this. In case I calculate based on this particular factor, maybe if you want, you can calculate it also. This will come out to be 1.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.0, 0 0.4. Because uh, why it is coming out like this? Because it's based on your this particular factors 3, 2, 2, and a 1. And, uh, Based on whatever is my a course attainment, I'll work for the program attainment corresponding to that all. And the, then how do we calculate the average attainment of each of these POs? Let's say there are 12 courses which are gone through and this is my attainment for each of the PO. Then I can think about Averaging them. Okay, average attainment is computed for each of the PO by taking average across all courses. Okay, let's say in case there are 10 courses there, and for each of the course, there is one attainment value which I get over here. I add them up and divide them by number of a courses. I get the average PO attainment for a particular course for a particular program there. Maybe this is what we have got a uh, easiest way of calculating your attainment as far as any of the courses there. Maybe I can repeat quickly. Yes. What you have to do in this particular scenario is 
कि योर इनपुट रिक्वायरमेंट इज योर इंटरनल असेसमेंट एंड द वेट इज फॉर द इंटरनल असेसमेंट एज वेल एज एंटम एग्जामिनेशन एंड वट सर्ट ऑफ वेट इज योर डिफाइन फॉर इंटरनल असेसमेंट एंड द एंड सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन थ्रू एंड द प्रैक्टिकल सेशन नो This is uh, I gave you the example. K for a theory subject, maybe there is a weightage of twenty percent, eighty percent, and point two factor is the one which is a multiplier factor, and point eight is the factor which is multiplier factor in this particular scenario. For the practical session, we got a sixty and a forty. We say it's a point six is the multiplier factor for internal, and for point four is the multiplier factor for the external. and as i said there is improvement there this is what we have done and then we define four level of the scale of 0 to 1 considered to measure the attainment levels and there are a uh, predefined threshold of a percentage of the marks in a particular subject and as i said this has to be decided at the department level or the institute level only and then this is how we define the attainment levels a based on the internal assessment score i can define that this is my attainment level <laughs> i as sir, a, yes sir, sir here we are talking about uh, 0 to 10% students scoring greater than equal to 60% that means out of a class of uh, 100 students there yes. are 10 students who have scored more than 60% okay uh, now sir, sir, my question Yes. Yeah, I, I understood that. My question is: Suppose my class has got hundred students, but yes. only sixty students appear the test. Then, then obviously you have to work upon the attainment level on the uh, number of students who appeared. Because again, this has to be defined by your policy only. Okay, my attainment level will be. But there is no hard and fast rule. A, there can be an institute who says I would like to consider those students. who have been sort of attendance as a part of your attainment level only there may be others who say ki in case he is not able to clear the things in case he is not able to complete the process let me exclude him from the scoring pattern that will depend upon your own department level decision which you take right uh, another part is that uh... while preparing the question paper we have uh, matched the questions to the singles uh, as well as peers so uh, suppose 100 students all the students appeared the question but they didn't answer one particular question suppose one uh, a is answered by 50 students one b is answered by 70 students one c is by 100 students then how do you calculate in this particular a uh, because i'll tell you this particular aspect has been done based on this only a for your final examination or your a final examination you will never get marks a question wise marks acquired by the student let's say i don't get this because ideally speaking we have to do that but since most of the affiliating universities uh, they just give you the final marks of the students because this is what is we say is a practically we have to see because let's say i don't get this particular data in case i get this particular data i'll take that example also in case i get the data where i get the uh, question wise score of each of the student because uh, this is what the automation we are looking for okay, in case i got a auto because if i ask a teacher ke okay, while evaluating the question paper he has to make a excel sheet for the question paper he is evaluated where for each of the question he is evaluated he is to give the marks very nice system i would say this is what most of the accreditation people look for but usually this sort of a data is not available that's what i say that's what i'm saying they but case, yes uh, um, but the question paper can be set in such a way that this particular thing can be done for example uh, my question paper has got 10 mid questions in the beginning so for each of the questions is if i have got a system where i will entry the question wise marks then i can get the data otherwise yeah. not otherwise not in case you enter this particular thing question wise yes then i can because tomorrow i'll come to this also okay each of the question is to be correlated to each of the co there 
a and each of the co which is the po it is meeting that sort of mapping has to be done because a, this is i would say a long term perspective in case i got a automation like this where my answer sheets will get scanned and teacher will see the not the physical question paper because this what a, maybe some of the cbse board they are trying to do now a, in case a student appear for a question paper then corresponding to each of the question paper there is a place there where marks has to be entered and once this teacher enter the marks there only then automatically this get shifted to a excel sheet life become very easy but in case i ask a teacher to physically because they, we are all te teachers practicality we know in case i ask a teacher hey, please while you evaluate the student you just make a excel sheet where you write for corresponding to each question what is the marks he scored now you imagine your your own affiliating universities let's say if i look at uh, your ip university only let's say there are maybe there may be 20000 students who will be there you imagine for 20000 students in case i have to make this sort of activities and pass it back to the respective institute okay, okay this is the mark which has been scored by a student right i think the in case i get this data maybe my this particular table will have a better perspective i'll give you that also example because in pec we follow that particular model but in affiliating universities colleges we can't have this sort of one. that's what this is one of the models which is there i hope i am able to answer you yes sir okay thank you so this is what we define the attainment level for each of the course there a, and based on this particular attainment level uh, for practical and theory we just calculate the co's there with the co80 w1 x1 into w whatever the weight is i define i multiply it with this particular factor there the w2 and w are the weight is as per the table one and then we commute the a for the theory k how many students this is what we calculate for each of the courses there what are courses are there for each of the course i make this particular values and same way i do it for the lab courses also and the co attainment of each subject is calculated and is given as the last column of that and course from there onwards we calculate the uh, po attainment there methodology for po attainment is similar a, as i said a, there will be uh, what is the basis on this is your program articulation matrix which is there which we define as cr uh, crij a, what are the this particular po uh, a to k corresponding each one of them there is so as i said okay, there is some def definition there okay, you how much is the linkages how much is the uh, uh, linkages which we have got corresponding to this particular p1 if it is very high we give the value 3 and if it is a uh, low i give the value 2 otherwise i'll give the value 1 again this is not a very hard and fast i can define it in terms of a 0 to uh, 1 to 5 score also that is again program articulation matrix if i define i can define that way also now if your university is like this if they are defining this program articulation matrix then you have to follow that if they are not defining this program articulation matrix then you have to make your own matrices and from there uh, this is what we see is a correlation correlation between this po1 and this particular course there and then we calculate this PO attainment corresponding to each of the course by this particular simple formula there, which I can apply and get this particular value. And this is for i is equal to 1 to n, j is equal to 1 to n. A, either you can think about making a computational model for this, or you can have to calculate it using the calculator, using any of the mechanisms which are there. Again, I'll repeat, okay, while you make this program articulation matrix, you have to be very clear 
ke there can't be one course which will having a correlation with all the 12 pos there and they and there can't be a program there that's another thing which i would like to add there can't be any program there which doesn't meet any of the one of the pos there okay in case i have got a program where one of the po is not matching there is no mapping with this one of the pos that means this particular program curriculum is not as per the expectation of the end user so this is how we define this particular attainments there so for each of the course i define particular attainments and if i would like to calculate the attainment for uh, for a program there what i do is i find out the average of all of these values that means this will give me corresponding to this particular po this is the attainment there in this particular program there now then we come to the po attainment through the indirect methods a as a yesterday we were talking about a your indirect assessment is done by graduating student through exit survey alumni survey and the employee survey a again i'll repeat these exit surveys these these are not fixed ones you can add one or two more or you can remove one or two more there so that is your own the way your having the surveys go to define that now then for each one them you have to define okay, what is the weightage for each of the survey <coughs> you imagine okay, for your a uh, employer you give a uh, weightage of 40% and for alumni and a uh, a brand alumni you give 30% other one you give 40% weightage there again it depends upon you what sort of weightage you are define for each of the parameter so i'm not going to deal of this all actually this perform design that is your creativity okay what sort of a question you will like to ask to the alumni yesterday i gave you some example of this particular uh, surveys so same way you can define your own survey there through which you define this particular values so what we do is uh, maybe you can think about a hard copy survey or these days these surveys are being performed on the google forms you define design this particular google form and take the values maybe from 0 to 5 and uh, 1 to 5 and uh, do it and distribute among the graduating student alumni and feedback for design with all the field program there now corresponding to each of the pos let's say somebody says it is they have to learn the engineering practices i can ask the student in your opinion how will you rate the engineering uh design component learning as far as the student is concerned they can rate it between 1 to 5 so this is what we say okay again this is one of the format which one can think about okay uh, okay there are certain question there you rate them between 1 to 5 maybe it's an excellent 5 4 good 3 good and why do you design this particular form do mention this particular values Okay, your five stand for excellent and not one stand for your excellent. So this is how we define this particular question, and we just define the ratings. Now then, what we do is, okay, whatever question we ask, let's say we ask n question. these we map it with the pos and the psos there okay let's say there are question number 1 has mapped to the to 1 and 2 question number 2 has mapped to po3 and question number 3 that is po4 there no hidden fast there you have to think about 
कि विच इज अ क्वेश्चन इन योर ओपिनियन विच इज मैपिंग टू वन ऑफ द पीओस और द पीएसओ सर के फॉर एवरी सर्वे मे बी यू स्टूडेंट सर्वे एल्युमिनाइज सर्वे एंड अदर सर्वे यू मैप योर क्वेश्चंस नाउ दिस इज योर क्रिएटिविटी हाउ यू क्रिएट अ गुड क्वेश्चंस देयर विद थ्रू व्हिच यू कैन आस्क योर एम्प्लॉयर्स और आस्क योर एग्जिट स्टूडेंट्स और एल्युमिनाइज देयर थ्रू व्हिच this particular mapping can be there in this particular scenario now what we do is question is having let's say five option there there and then we add find the average rating for each question among all the student in the class and that we tabulate question number 1 let's say this is 4.15 question number 2 there is a Uh, this is what we usually do <coughs> if i wanted to evaluate all the things from each student for each of the question i take the values and then corresponding to one question i just average it out and get this sort of a value so okay, out of a uh, 5 my score is 4.15 and question number 2 is this question number 8 is this and question number n is this part of the score So this is what we say is the average rating for each of the question, which we have to define as far as the evaluation process. For example, <clears throat> so what we do is with the attainment of each of the pure through student exit survey is determined using a table nine and a table ten. A table nine was your uh, question and the pure of pure source there. and this is my evaluation which has come for each of the question there so this is how i tabulate this particular values in this particular table there then similarly we perform this alumni survey there pure attainment through alumni survey is determined by this and imply survey we just Uh, think of a how employer are using this particular mechanism there now then again we define a uh, 40% of the student exit survey 30% of the alumni and employer survey this has to be defined why you define this sort of a surveys there and this is how we calculate a po indirect test PO indirect I is point zero four of PO indirect students I point zero three of alumni and this is for the PO of the employer I. So that means corresponding to each of this, what is the average value I got? I multiply it with this, and this is what I get the PO indirect value mechanism. I hope uh, this particular calculation is clear to you. Maybe I can have one or two responses, or one two one or two questions here only. Okay, if there is no question, I can proceed ahead. Well, basically, it's a calculation which we yes. Hello. Yes, uh, sir. Whether it is mandatory that all the POs have to be attained in the entire program for direct attainment. Maybe indirect so for the direct thing where we are looking at the curriculum, we it is a mandatory. A for the curriculum, all the POs has to be met there. PO POs has been met. But in case of uh, indirect method, is it desirable? A because basically what you are doing is you are asking some questions to the students, asking some questions to the. alumni asking some questions to the <coughs> other there so this is your own perception there which this is what we were defining uh, sir uh, it is clear if at all any po is not mapped or attained to uh, the direct attainment then can we show that in the uh, gap and uh, then can we see that gap yes it can maybe in case you have defined a question yes in case you define a question uh which 
uh, in your own perspective, maybe mapping to one of the POs there. That is one thing, but a, we are not going for a correlating it high correlation, low correlation, or middle correlation. What we are going for is the question is related to it. Even if it is a mildly related, still I uh, over here. Now over here, you can just say if this particular question one could meet P O zero one and a P zero two. And I can say it's a, a thumb rule. If you can map each of these POs with some other questions, whether it's maps very high, very low, or a very mild mapping is there, still you can add it. Because this is <coughs> something which is subjective. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other question which is there? Not kindly tell about table eight and table ten, sir. Yes. Kindly explain about table eight and ten. Yes. Why I couldn't get you? What should no, I do sir. with kindly table eight and ten, sir? Table eight and then please tell sir again, sir. Ah, so oh, table eight onwards I should tell again. Okay, okay, I'll repeat. That's okay. Yes. I'll, I'll repeat. Don't worry. I, then I'll do. Okay, then let me complete. This is what we say is the evolution process, which we get, and this is a we get all the alumni survey, employer survey, and we define some weightages there: 0 0.4, 0 0.3, uh, and 0 0.3 for each one of them. Then corresponding each of the PO, we calculate this particular values based on the values which we have got over here. Right. That's what we say. PO indirect is where i is equal to one to n is n is number of POs and the PO series. And the PO attainment, we just put it like this: a graduation survey. What is this attainment level which are there? And this alumni survey is there, and employee survey is not there. And indirect user attainment is maybe you can just have the average of that. Now, since uh, that's another thing, if we want to normalize it also, since we have calculated based on the one to five scale, and other uh, POs we have calculated between one to three scale, direct, let's say direct. We are calculated from one to three scale, and indirect we are calculated from one to five scale. So what we have to do is we have to normalize it. We say we say the scaling there, and this is PO indirect as I S PO indirect I into three divided by five. What is three divided by five? Because we have got other direct we have got with the three scaling, and this we have got with the five. So that's why we have to scale them into this particular value. Or these are two methods. Either I could have given only three choices to the uh, employer, alumni, or student exit survey. There, maybe that is a too low choice. That's what this psychologist people say. Hey, you should give five choices. So that's why after we give the five choices, we normalize it to the three choices there with this particular PO indirect formula. So this is what we just get as far as PO attainment to the level of one is two, three. Now this is what our indirect attainments which are there, and this was the our direct attainments. Now, now what we have to do is now we have got a values which we see the direct attainments, and we have got a value which is the indirect attainments. <coughs> now then a uh, we have to think about a uh, how we rate them. Let's say a uh, we now we have got two values. One is the direct assessment, and another is the indirect assessment. There now let's say we give the base eighty twenty weightage to each one of them. Eighty percent because obviously in case I had taught a particular student, there was student there with me for all the uh, four years. My weightage for that should be higher, 
as compared to weightage for the indirect assessment, which might have taken for only <coughs> one sample survey. So that's what we do. A, the overall PO attainment is calculated through direct assessment table 7 and an indirect assessment table 13, considering which weightage of each, for example, 80% of this and 20%. And PO over 0.8 of PO direct I, 0.2 PO direct indirect I, and where N is varying from 1 to N over there. Number of POs and the number of POs there. A, this is, will give you the corresponding to one PO. This will be the attainment over your uh, direct uh, assessment, your indirect, and this is the PO overall attainment corresponding to each of the program. Maybe I'll repeat calculation involved. For the direct method, yes, I did direct also do that. <laughs> yes, a PO attainment through the indirect method, as I said, it can be through the student survey, alumni survey, and the employee survey. These are the major components which are there. Your you have to define what you define for each one of them. Let's say for this particular sample, we define 40% for the student survey, 30% for the alumni and the implied survey. We may, as I said, you can think of a Google form or a hard copy for getting these values. Uh, let me impart this particular survey there. And we have got some formats are there. There is no standard formats. Every institute has to define its own format as far as this particular question are concerned. <coughs> and we defined it as scale of a five. Five is excellent, very good, good, average, and the poor. I define the statements. Let's say I define n question. These are the question question there, and one has to give the rating corresponding to that question there. This is what we say the questioning there. Then mapping of the POs and the PSOs there. What we do is each of these questions we map it with much intelligence uh, with each of the POs there. Let's say question number one has mapped to PO01 and a P02. And question number two mapped to three. Question number three has mapped to four. Like this, I map your question that is it necessary each of the POs has to be mapped. Uh, they don't insist, but it is usually desirable is some question should take care of POs there. Let's say we would like to uh, find out from the uh, students, uh, we call it a 360 degree feedback. In case I would like to have a 360 degree feedback, my question should be such, you should be able to ask all the POs and the PSOs. Now this is, the, and I'll repeat, first make the questions. Then we make the mapping corresponding each of the question. I map it with the uh, POs there. And then I take this particular values from the students and we average them. Let's say question number one, in case there are 60 students who are given the answers, then I find so a total of all the values, mean of these values for each one of them. So this is what we get corresponding to each of the question what is the value which is coming over here. So the, the attainment of each of the PO through student exit survey is determined by using the table 9 and 10, and the attainment value of the student is stability below. Then same way, we just calculate for the alumni, we just calculate for the implied survey. <coughs> now then we calculate for each of the POs, what is the indirect attainment which is there. Again, I have to define what sort of weightage I define for this sort of a survey there, 40, 30, and 30 for these two surveys, and I calculate this value. PI indirect is your 0.4 of student, 0.3 of a PI alumni, and 0.3 of the employer.
So this is how I make this particular <coughs> graduate exit survey. I define this alumni survey. I define this and employer survey. I define this. Then I define the weightages and get this particular value. So then uh, we just define. We had defined a scaling from one to five. Whereas for the other, we are given the scaling one, two, three. What we have done is we have just normalized it. We scale it down, and with this particular corresponding each of the POI, I multiply it by three by five and get the direct value. And this is how I get the indirect PO values corresponding to each one of them. Now what I got is I got a, a corresponding to each of the PO. I got the values. Corresponding to each of the uh, PO, I got the indirect value. These are two values which I get. Now then I define a, what sort of weightage I could define for each one of them. Maybe I can think about 80% of the weightage for the direct component, 20% is for the indirect component. I calculate it as PO overall as this particular value. And this value varies from I equal to 1 to all the n, I get this particular value. PO one direct assessment, indirect assessment. This is the overall. This will be. This will cover your overall evaluation corresponding to one program for a one year, right? Now, as I said, the weightage for different surveys can be different. Again, your board of studies, your department committee has to define. What is the weightage to be given? Let's say somebody says 40, 30, 30, others say 50, 25, 25. Uh, it's again your subjective thing. Uh, once I define this weightage, I say 50, 50, 50, 25, 25, or I could have defined 60, 15, uh, 60, 20, and 20 also. Because uh, justification, as I said, uh, since your students are staying with you for this many years, and there are mass scale of the student who will participate there. That's why more weightage is there. And corresponding to alum, alumni, and maybe they are not uh, very forthcoming even the feedback in case, well, this is a general thing. In case I send my performer to my 100 alumni, at the end of the day, I may get 40 performers back or 60 back. But I may never get a 100 performer filled up. So that's why we say this is a weightage which we define. Now then again, your overall weightage which we define. I gave the example of 80, 20. It can be 75 and 25. Now this is how we define the weightages. Can I interrupt? Maybe, yes. Uh, sir, is there any minimum requirement of the number of surveys or feedbacks to be collected or conducted? Uh, no, there is and if a, not, what is the design because of one by one, I, there is no state to be state for a formula. A, I should get the data for 100 or 200 or 500. That is what we just say sampling. A, in case I try to have some data, maybe some institute have got 100 for the 100 or 200 people. A, some may be having for only 20 or 40 people. There is no hard and fast rule there. What is the size of the data which we have to collect in this particular scenario? Maybe I, if you agree, I can take up question for this particular direct and indirect evaluation. Maybe then I can shift to the other evaluation there. Now, sir, in indirect uh, assessment, the number of service uh, can be two, three, four, or five. How many? Uh, so there, there is any minimum requirement or if not then what is the desirable uh, amount no participation you have to ensure there is no minimum there okay, let's say even if i got a, a let's say exit survey of the students once students are uh, going from the institute what is expected is every student will participate even if 80 percent of the student participate in their survey it is taken as a very good survey. Whereas in case of alumni and the employer, 
I may be having only 50 employers because this is a uh, continuous thing which is there. Okay, employer may not be coming to you every day, or all the hundred employer may not come to you on the same day. Maybe there are some employer who will fill this information. Some people may not fill this information. Okay, their companies don't allow. So they maybe for our students, yes, we require 80 percent to the students to make it as a good survey but for the employer and alumni it has it has to be a reasonable good survey but there is no hard and fast in this many percent of the students they're in this particular scenario yes other questions You may unmute yourself and ask questions directly. Good afternoon. Sir. Was... sir, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, it should be very nice if you can. Can you be a little more uh, audible? Audible. Yes, uh, uh, sir, uh, it's regarding the levels level one, level two, and level three. How to set them? Uh, the, the attainment level, sir. Uh, if you can repeat that part, uh, it would be very nice. No, what are the levels you're looking for? So the uh, attainment level one, level two, level three. The uh, previous one, you want to put it shown. Oh, direct assessment. That is yes, what uh, your institute has to set. Okay, what we say is, okay, if it's a institute. Uh, which is very well recognized, very good institute, results are pretty good there, then I can think about, yes, uh, you are talking about, yes, these levels. Yes, sir. Yes, these levels. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, these levels has to be set up by the your own department. Uh, looking at the conditions which are there, uh, we are to see. We are to see okay, what is the conditions there in your particular institute. In case uh, because uh, I, that's that's what I said. This can be based on the courses also. This can be department wise also. This can be the institute wise also. Uh, sir, further uh, the this, if I'm given a course and I'm asked to decide the attainment level, then uh, could you please kindly give you guidelines how to decide the attainment level? No, that's what I'm saying. It is your board of studies, your senate who is to decide okay, okay, what is the attainment level you define. But it should be reasonable, good attainment level which you have to think of. Because let's say, uh, if I say, even if students are scoring 70% marks, I attainment level I say is very high, then there is something wrong with my def definitions on it. So this, all these factors has to be defined by your board of study, your institute or a management committee. There is no hard guidelines for this, right? Hello. Okay, any other question or any other? Yeah, there is one question, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, last time uh, NBR visited our department and they were expecting that uh, this curve should always increase, the attainment level should always go up. Yes, a attainment levels. Let's see, I define this attainment level today, but I realize okay, my students now they have start scoring more. This is what we see is a continuous improvement. Your attainment level is a dynamic process which can change later. Because they, they Hello? I give example initially. Okay, your initially, okay, let's say, how do you define the weightages? Let's say. Uh, yeah, I understood, but you have to change it. Yeah. No, my question was. Yeah. My question was, 
like sometimes it increases sometimes it decreases because it depends upon the quality of the student also the quite uh, the uh, complexness of the question paper design so there are many factors included so it will be always increasing so sometimes it increases sometimes it decreases so at our time they said that it should always increase the attainment level always increases otherwise i get zero mark so what is the current uh, this, uh, this one how no, they nothing i would say there is nothing like because this again a subjective decision there is nothing like every time it is to improve there can't continuous improvement because i go right in saying students may be bad students may be good and based on their performance only my attainment level may be falling or good only the thing is the process has to be documented this is what ngs is Okay, is there some question in the chat box also? No, Professor, but no, there was no question in the chat. Okay, there is no question. question. Maybe one question yes. I came across uh, in the beginning itself that one of the participants was asking. Say, for huh. example, uh, there are uh, twenty courses and we are calculating the average PO attainment. So out right. of twenty courses for PO one, only ten courses was bad. So yeah. because the total of the PO one is to be divided by ten, or is to be divided by no, no, it is divided by the number of courses we, which is this particular PO is valid. Correct. I, so I did by so twenty courses. Wherever, wherever there is a dash, you need not to calculate that. Yeah, yeah, you not to add that. Correct. So if there are only ten courses, so you need to divide by ten the total. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is true. No other question, uh, participants. If you have question, you can unmute yourself and ask clearly. And while I'm doing this, take care of the background noise, please. Sir, I say good afternoon again. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, sir, uh, referring to the table for three, in table three, uh, in each time we have again my request, request. Again, my request to you: Will you be more audible? Uh, in table three. Is there in table uh, three? It is. Marinda Reddy sir, please mute yourself. Marinda Reddy sir. Zero to ten percent of students scoring greater than equal to seventy percent. So yeah. every time we are mentioning seventy percent only. So that is zero to ten percent of the student. I understand that maybe the ten percent of the whole class who is getting more than seventy percent. But every time we are repeating it. 10 to 40 percent of the students are uh, schooling. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, what we are saying is, a, a, in case 10 percent of the students are scoring more than 70 percent of marks, I'll give the attainment level as zero. But in case there are 35 percent of the students who are scoring more than 70 percent, then I'll give them the attainment level one. And in case there are 55 percent of the students who are scoring more than 70 percent, then I'll give attainment level 2 and in case there are 90 percent of the students who are scoring more than 70 percent i'll give them the attainment level 3. this is how this particular tables are defined and these two tables are one is for the theory courses and one is for the practical courses what we say is skill-based courses you score high marks because we expect skill has to be well and in case of a theory courses marks are low that's why we have kept 60 and a 55 percent mark right i hope that Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, just okay. one, uh, one more part. Uh, as ah. it is said that NBA expects our uh, attainment level shall keep increasing. Means the uh, percentage of students who are performing uh, better, batch wise, mm -hmm. that this shall happen. Yes. Now, uh, to doc document it in terms of a process. How do we do that? Because we know that in some of the batches, uh, the students, have, some of the batches, students are not very good. Yes, that usually is there, but uh, I answered this earlier also. Uh, you have to document it. Okay, let's say in case student is performing bad in all the five courses, it's acceptable. But in case there is only one course where he's scoring badly, all the students are scoring badly, in all the other scoring, the students are performing very well. In that particular case, my uh, uh, but the idea is we have to see why in that particular course only these students are not performing that well. We have to find the reason for that. That's what NV also looks for. Right? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, okay. Sir, uh, uh, if the attainment level is not reached for one course, 
yeah. uh, or it is not improved, then uh -huh. what remedial measure we need to show? Does MPA expect uh, for us to show some remedial measure? Yes. Maybe they uh, what they expect is what is there you have done the continuous improvement there. Let's say uh, there can be a course where syllabus is very heavy. That way I observe for two years, syllabus is very heavy. My both the teacher both, both the teachers who taught it have realized this and inform the department hey, you need to reduce a part of the syllabi there. Then that is what we see the continuous improvement which is there. Hey, I have reduced the syllabus, or there can be one the other reason. If the equipment which is required for running that particular course is not there, or the trained manpower which is required to teach this particular is not there, what the parameter measure which the institute is taking? Let's say in case teacher is not good, I can send one of the teachers to a one of the good institute and learn that particular part from there and let him teach there. Because this is what we expect. They put some action. And there will always be some improvement which will happen in that particular course. Uh, sir, considering the remedial class conduction, does it have any, yeah. uh, any link with this uh, attainment level? If the attainment level is poor, uh, or maybe the attainment level is good, uh, but still there are some failures in the class, then do we need to show remedial classes? Rem or the remedial yes. measures uh, taken? Because remedial classes are a part of the curricula only. We say okay, remedial classes, there may be, because it's a heterogeneity is there in the classes. There may be some very good learner, there may be poor learner there. In case I've got a poor learner, I have to identify them and uh, have some remedial classes for those. This is what is expected as a process only within the system. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Okay, then if you are through with this, I can go to a slightly complex way of calculating this. But this is the easiest method I thought. If we can do it. Dear participants, meanwhile, there is an announcement that uh, by now the three MCQ tests have already been completed but, and the fourth, that is the last one is today, 8 to 8.30 evening. So any of the participants who wanted to improve the performance, uh, they can appear, reappear, in fact, even if it is a third test for them. And this uh, provision has been uh, created because few of the participants who are requesting me on my personal WhatsApp. So every, it is open to every participant, anyone and everyone who wanted to improve can appear for the MCQ test that is 8 p.m. to 8.30 uh, p.m. And uh, no need to select a slot again, it will be open to all the participants. Thank you so much. Yes, sir, please. Yes, uh, our, the earlier process which I discussed with you was related to some of the institute which is affiliated to some institute uh, university there but this particular one is our own which we are deemed university we have got a whole mechanism of doing this particular aspect here so the, i thought i'll discuss this with uh, our scheme of things with you also that is our departmental a about co attainment only maybe indirect so i'm not coming to the indirect service another thing i'm coming take only one course you know, how exactly this attainment is there a Let's say corresponding, what we do in this particular scenario is COI is the IH course outcome and EMM is the IH evaluation component with maximum marks MM. A, let's say there is an assignment there, there is a, another assignment to quiz there. So what we do is corresponding to each one of them, we just define their weightages. W is the weightage of the COI in the EI. That means corresponding to the CO1, what is the weightage in this particular scenario here? Maybe this is what uh, we are defined and COET is your IH CO for the end term examination. Uh, for my end term examination, what is there in this particular value here? Now, this is how I calculate a E of COI of the kth thing is 
what is what is this particular MPIG into this particular weightage into <laughs> this particular value. So this is slightly complex in case you would like to follow this particular thing. And this is the total of a CIOP corresponding to each of the course here. MK is the actual marks of the K student in the IS evaluation component. It, that means in the earlier evaluation, what we talked about is the internal evaluation, external evaluation. Now, in this particular thing, what we're talking about is okay, there may be different components there. Okay, in case there are five components there, okay, this is MGK, actual marks of the Kth student in the Jth evaluation component. Now, this evaluation component can be your subject as corresponding to each of the course. There are questions where I can go by the question logs. So, this is another me mechanism for doing the same thing. And SMG is the scale marks of GS evaluation component as per the weight. What the weight is corresponding to this, it should come out to be 100. And we are done this particular weight is. <laughs> and M, M, this is the actual marks of the Kth student in the question map. The, this is what I said in our institute. What we do is okay, we take quiz one, quiz two, quiz three, and sessional one, sessional two, and the others. And while we go for our final examination, there what we do is we make a Excel sheet for what are the marks obtained by each of the student in each of the question there. I hope not can you appreciate a, we can think about making it more complex by adding this particular thing. A, in case I, because this is where I will be driving you here tomorrow. A, Corresponding to each of the question which will be a set, I have to think about which is the CO it is covering. Let's say in case I have defined four outcomes, I have set eight questions. I have to see whether while I am making the question paper, whether all my COs are mapped or not. So in case I have got this sort of a mapping, then I can map it with my uh, COPO mapping there also. Whatever that is what said is in our end term, I go question wise, have the question there, and go for the marks over there. Maybe this is the grading component. If it is a three, if CO is greater than 60, and two, that means corresponding each of the CO I try to map a three to one, and I just map it with greater than 60, 40, and less than 40 over there. Uh, yeah, this is what we got CO attainment levels I define. We define in terms of 3, 2.5, 2, 1.5, and 1. If number of students getting grade 3, uh, grade CO greater than 60, that means easy, for each of the CO component, if it is marks are more than 60, he will be getting that particular value, CO in that particular attainment. 2.5, it's between 50 and 60. If a 2, between 40 and a 50. That means what we are doing is, Corresponding to each of the, let's say, COI, we try to map how much marks he has scored in that, and corresponding to that, we try to grade them. And then we try to map it with each of the uh, attainment level, with each of the VI's. VI attainment is VI over 3 average of CO attainment. This is what we talked about there also. Or there is another method through which we do. But uh, these are two methods through which we just go for the attainment. And overall PO attainment, again, we do with the 0.8 and a 0 0.2 of this particular, a direct and a indirect assessment mechanism there. I talked about direct mechanism of evaluation in this particular case. Now, idea in this particular case is, okay, in case of I got different components of evaluation, and I would like to keep track of each of the component to which CO it is mapping, then corresponding to that, I would like to map, match. So what this system is, this is extension of our earlier system, which I talked about, where let's say in that system, what we've done is we are just talking about okay, internal evaluation is only one. Whereas in this particular case, we are talking, okay, my internal evaluation has got different components there. And what we talked about is okay, our final examination marks are single. 
whereas in our case what we talked about is each of the student having got score some of the marks in each of the question that has to be taken care by their own so this is what another mechanism through which we calculate the sort of attainment level there now what nba expects is that we should move up to this particular system there. because if i just because in the earlier case is more averaging out whereas in this particular case it gives you the benefit that for each of the component you try to work out on this basis of again i repeat this particular method is a averaging out each of the component which we have got for the assessment let's say uh, co these are my co1 co2 co3 and others and this is for my, my evaluation components and this is the weightage which i define for each of the component and based on the this particular weightage i calculate some of this particular value and i can come out with the single value maybe if, if i would not say that in one go only you can understand this particular thing because this has got a more complexities but if you try to see this this will give you good idea how exactly this particular values has to be calculated right okay this is how we calculate the pos there and average pos and calculate the pos and the pu attainment now this is a philosophy which i talked about and there is the implementation of this also i'll come to that also i hope this chart is visible No, it is not visible. Okay, I'll go to then again. I'll go to the share. Yeah, please. I remove this. This I stop. Yes, I again go to share. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the UG course. We have this sort of a sheet has been made by one of the teachers there. Okay, <coughs> they let's say yeah, uh, he or she has defined quiz one, quiz midterm one, tutorial one. These are the component and what this is, is meeting: CO one, CO two, and CO three, CO four, and this is what it is meeting: quiz one, midterm one, and two. and this is a percentage of weightage for this and then corresponding to each one of them i grade and this is the grading which we have done and we say uh, this is what achieved or not maybe i just define this case if one my university says there is no achievement in case i just go for only one and then again for the second component and second achievement and third component i go for this particular achievement <coughs> and i go for all this evolution yes co1 this is the weightage i would like to give the quiz and we term as this co2 and co3 and a co4 corresponding each of the co's we define this sort of a weightage corresponding to the quiz and other things there this is what detail marks of all the students who are there so these sort of things you can do in excel only because there are a lot of calculation involved in this particular scenario there yes uh, this is how i define a i question okay, let's say there are n term questions okay, my n term question number 3 a is of 10 marks and it is meeting my co1 and question number 4 c is of 3 marks and it is meeting co1 and question number 4 is 5 marks and it is meeting 1 and like this k now 
if i look at this way question number 3 4 4 and others that means i can define which is the co it is mapping maybe if at the end of the day if somebody asks me if whether all the co's which have been defined for a course has been met there or not then i can define through my own question paper if this is the co mapping which is there in this particular scenario and these are the end marks which are there and let's say my total marks are 15 75 and then each then we find out corresponding to each of the co how much marks are there maybe co1 18 marks co2 16 marks co3 25 marks and co4 60 marks so this is what we say our detailing now you imagine <coughs> in your scenario how this thing can be done in case while the question paper is being set your question paper setter for that external setter he makes this particular table this is one first complexity and then this is what we have to compute this marks ki how much marks are there for each of the component here and co this is what we say corresponding to each of the students we make this particular chart here now you will observe if there are certain columns where there are no marks that means this fellow has not attempted this particular question there so that means in case of a co3 attainment if it is through this question number 2a there may be lot of a student who not attempted because if you look at this particular question question number 2b that means what can i infer out of this is most of the students have not understood this particular part now zero says ke they scored zero and dash is they have not attempted <clears throat> right this is what we see ke this is what all the marks are there it through which this particular components can be calculated there's another way of doing it that's more i would say this is more a detailing part okay how this thing can be done in this particular scenario there if we can go for detailing and all marks are okay how much marks he scored this is another table which we make okay let's say subran show he scored 3 marks in quiz 1 out of 10 and 3 marks in quiz 2 out of 10 the 6 marks out of 10 and 0 marks in the fourth quiz and if it is a weightage is 20 this is what the marks is get and msc we got score 30 msc or uh, we once we remove take its weightages it comes out to be 9 only to real 10 so this is what we say is the total calculation which we perform as for each of the component of the course there and from there onward we draw this particular let's say in case i got this particular quiz and other marks and this particular detail marks then i can come to this particular attainment level maybe this is another mechanism through which this particular part is be calculated right so idea is to give you both Okay, in case you have got a simple affiliated institute where you are working on that, your earlier method is there, and in case you have got a uh, deemed university status or you are the one who are evaluating all the students of your own, then this can be one of the methods through which this can be done. Right now, I'll be open for questions because uh, we said. a last uh, 20 25 minutes we have to keep for the question now so participants you can unmute again yourself yes and uh, ask question directly i think there were two important aspect of nba education process after the base 
uh, philosophies. One was mapping, CO2 mapping, and uh, second is attainment. Both have been done fabulously, and uh, Professor Sofer not only has explained the basic and the fundamental method of attainment, has also explained the complex method so that if the tier one institution have got these facilities and this enablement, probably they may go for this uh, attainment instead of that simple attainment. And an affiliated an institution under tier two may go for that uh, basic uh, philosophy of that. So now you can unmute yourself and ask question directly. Maybe I would like to find out from you how many of you are the autonomous institutes or universities there who are there with us in this particular seminar. Sir, I'm 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 one of them. We are an autonomous institution of Ministry of Environment and Forest. Uh, can you know the name of the institute? The Indian Institute of Forest Management. Okay, instead of forest management, okay, you are running BTEC program. No, no, sir. We run we run MBA uh, kind of programs. We run two okay. PG diploma programs, one in forestry management and one in sustainability management. Okay, that's great. Uh, maybe you might be having a lesser number of students. Maybe not more than hundred. Sir, our total student strength is close to around three hundred, including both the programs. Okay, three hundred students. Right. And as our as our, as our PG program, sir. Yes. We Maybe only run PG programs. Okay. And uh, our batch size is in one program, the batch size is 120, and another the batch size is uh, 50. Okay. Maybe what? In your case, NB team comes to your institute, we will expect the second sort of option there because you are the internal evaluator there. Then and you are the degree institute also, a expectation from you will be slightly high as compared to the other institutes. And you have to think about how exactly this particular aspect can be covered up here. Because attainment level, you have to go in details if you go for the accreditation purpose. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Is there only one who is there with the disorder status? Okay, then in that case, in that case, if most of you are from the affiliating institutes only, let's consider upon the first one only. In case because you already asked me a number of questions from the first only. In case there are further more questions there, I'm happy to answer those questions. Sir, good afternoon, sir. I'm good afternoon, sir. I'm uh, you're audible. Yeah, sir, I would like to ask question. Apart from the internal and the uh, uh, internal assessments, if we want to do additional assessments, can we conduct the quiz and all on our own? Yeah, the, because internal assessment is your components only. A, it is your department who should define what is the internal component which should be there corresponding to a course. You can think about a quiz, you can think about assignment, you can think about a uh, visit there. Part of your evaluation process there. Only thing yes, is, sir, because it is now, for each one of them. Uh, yes, sir. Because now we are changed to online mode, so we have to yeah. think accordingly and add it. No, sir, no. So yeah, it can be done on online mode. Because uh, online mode, mode Evaluation is a big challenge. How the clue you have to go for it? Because let's say you go for a, a some platform which is available, Google and others, through which you just conduct the test. Because we also do this sort of exercises. Okay, we conduct our test through Google. Uh, now, but now we are uh, going for the protector mode. That's another mode which is there. What happens in this mode is. A, your students' activities are also observed in this particular process because the camera which is there that is being controlled by you all. So you can observe what is your student doing, and he can open only one window 
on the system at a time once is to go for the test there. So maybe online there has got a different challenges, but yes, or if you go for this sort of a test there, a, instead of if you have to go to quiz, go to the quiz through the a, this online media only. Because in that process, uh, all the test results and other things you get in no time. Other than evaluating the quiz itself is a big task for the teachers. Yes, I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yes. Hello, sir. Sir, good afternoon. This is Dheeraj Joshi from Jaipur. Okay, Dheeraj. Uh, sir, uh, sir, actually, uh, I have got three time accreditation in my mechanical engineering department previously. Okay. And uh, I am heading the mechanical department and, in fact, NBA coordinator of the institute as well. So, oh, uh, sir, my problem is that uh, over these years, the intake of the students uh, has drastically dec decreased in terms of their soft skills and technical expertise. Their uh, mm -hmm. first uh, knowledge of uh, plus two level is very deteriorated, as I guess. And because of this, sir, uh, attainment level, I am afraid attainment level is decreasing, the university results are decreasing. So, how can I bridge this uh, problem or the gap to the continuous improvement uh, section or the clause of? Uh, no. uh, okay, in that case, you have to plan your targets because let's say you have gone for the three recognition. Three uh, times, sir. Because I have data, is, data is only three years. Nobody will ask you what was your attainment level, which is five years back or ten years back. Everyone will ask you because, in case of this uh, decline, that is also a very slow decline, which is there. Not that it is a very quick. Past decline. Okay. Earlier, I was having a target I set 100%. Suddenly, I need not reduce it to 60% or so. I have to imagine, I have to think how exactly my. Well, basically, what I am telling you is it's a three year data only. And in three year data, a decline is usually very slow. It's not that case, it's a drastic decline which will happen as far as the students are concerned. So right in saying, if you look at the first accreditation which you've gone for a uh, six year back, level of students were very high. Yes, now once you go for the accreditation, level of student is slightly low, which is slightly low. But this particular decline will be there in the last three years. So you have to target accordingly. Okay, so sorry, I, I should not uh, uh, decrease my target level because for the uh, continuous improvement, I definitely have to uh, improve them. Target yeah, level. That I agree, but only thing is for that you struggle very hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you but for the... My only concern is this particular aspect of this particular course file making and making this sort of a table has to be imbibed into your system only. I can't think of. Yeah, after three years, I'll be making these targets, or after two years, I'll start preparing. Because in case you have to preparing for MBA accreditation, you have to think about how exactly you can have the data for the last three years. Is it I can plan it today? I'll go for the accreditation three years after three years, or I can reform and look at my data and make some course file and other thing for the last three years. But okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. This is what you have to take care. Of. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I'm Pranant Padmanabhan from Bangalore. Yes. Hello. Uh, sir, can Hello. you throw a little light on the PSO, sir? PSOs. Yes, yes, sir. Little light because uh, I have done accreditation for last uh, four five days. Only Washington Accord I was not uh, not got involved much. That is why I wanted to know a little about that. He was okay. Uh, maybe uh, Professor Grover might have talked to you about PSOs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PSOs Correct. are the program specific objectives. Specific where uh, how to just get it get uh, get that done? Uh, what you have to do is that is uh, based on your local conditions, uh -huh. local environment. You have to uh -huh. think about certain uh, outcome which you would like to have for the program. Let's say uh -huh. you imagine. Uh, yeah. You are in a bell, you are in Bangalore, right? Yeah. Yeah. There is an yeah. IT industry there. There is a very heavy yeah. IT industry there. Yeah, 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 sure. 
I am, I am we giving focus? the Vixka highly interesting only, IT industry only. Yeah. Can we focus my programs to the IT industry? Okay. Because okay. Okay. what will happen is while yeah. you define your PSOs, the yeah. focus has to be upon the IT only. Okay, okay, okay. IT is local to you. IT may not be local to a uh, Bihar. Uh, Where a lot of things may not stand true. Uh, Maybe true to Bangalore, there while you define your because what they say is uh, 12 POs are fixed, but rest of the one or two you could define for your own environment. Bond. As I gave an example corresponding to this, you can define your own environment. The outcome will be your student will be able to join the IT industry. That can be one of the mechanisms through which you can think of. I come from and electronic department. Okay, new IT is. Normally related, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. IT and our other industry, which is there, which can yeah. be checked up within your local environment only. That you yeah, can. Yeah, we have Bell, ISRO, everything in Bangalore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, because ISRO is... may be there in Bangalore only. ISRO may not be there in UP. So uh, UP can't put up this sort of PSO in their program. Yeah, yeah. He can do something different. Whereas you can put yeah. up this information there. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Not okay. Yes, if there is another question, I can answer. Otherwise, we can close the session. So, participants, if there are no questions, please confirm in the chat window. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, there is one question. Yes. Uh, sir, whatever the flow you have given, like uh, first you decide a weightage, then uh, attainment levels you decide. So, is yeah. this a normal flow, the standard flow, or we can have some other thing also? Yeah, yeah, it's a normal process which I talked about. But only thing is, weightage can be yours, components can be yours, and a uh, weightage components and uh, this milestones that can be okay, whatever the let's say I give you the example okay, 10 per in case students are having 70 percent marks I'll give the attainment as one but based on your own environment and condition you can think about that sort of uh, attainment levels Okay, Dr. Ravinder Kumar wants to ask something. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. My voice is audible to you, sir. Yeah, yeah I'm audible. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, you have today you have given very excellent presentation, sir. I'm lines from like. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I am from Kerala Department of Engineering College, Mylavaram, Andhra Pradesh, sir. Uh, so okay. in this connection, sir, uh, I am facing uh, two few problems. Uh, that uh, one is uh, while. Uh, uh, attaining the COs for uh, each courses or combination of the courses. So sometimes we have to face either our questions, sir. So in under the CO1, we have uh, either our questions, that is question one and question two. Mm -hmm. So in that case, uh, uh, you know, uh, in CO1, sometimes I may get the CO attainment for uh, question one as uh, 40 percent and uh, second question as 60 percent. So in that case, uh, how can we make uh, balance? Because uh, can we make it as a average uh, in this case, or uh, how we can get this one, sir? No, sir. What you have to do is while designing your question paper. This is what we will talk about tomorrow. Okay, while designing a question paper, you have to balance. Let's say we will talk about this. Okay, in case there are certain CEOs there that has got a more weightage. Okay, whole of courses which is there corresponding to two or three CEOs there and yes, but with the question for your set are entirely from one portion which may be having two lectures only yes, what will you do so because there, there's an imbalance in your processes there which has to be taken care of at the continuous improvement yes sir sir, yes, sir. Another, yes, sir. another question is that uh, if we want to put the target, you know, uh, after going through the NBA application, where they have clearly mentioned that uh, take the average of the uh, attendance of the courses. Sir. So in that case, for each course, after taking the average, uh, average of the question, 
then I will consider it as a target. Then after then count above the average marks. So in that case, uh, I'm going to be getting a huge gap between the average targeted marks and the uh, counting more than the class average marks. So in that case, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are facing some trouble in this uh, keeping the target as a mark and attainment is uh, another issue, sir. No, uh, what we do is, uh, while we define your attainments and other things, we just define the ranges. We don't give a fixed values there, we define ranges. So uh, within the range, you just uh, make that particular range in such a way that you may face a problem at the later end. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sir. Yeah, Professor Safat, one of the participants is asking, is there any consultant agency available for doing or getting NBA accredited if suppose data is provided to them? My dear friend, that what is the, this uh, OBS market? <laughs> we don't want to encourage that. Yeah, we don't want to all an institution, all an institution <laughs> develop as a as develop as a culture. And uh, Professor Sofat, one of the participants want that you should uh, go back to table one and just quickly one or two minutes explain the formula again. Uh, in the earlier ones. Table one, attainment. Attainment, uh, which we, uh, it's, I consider two schemes, right? it is an earlier scheme they want. And right? the first, can, can first you one. answer yourself and ask? Okay, I'll just quickly uh, revise all the tables and formulas. Sir, little bit. No, the two is there is a time limit. Sir has shown the first one. Please. You want? Yes, sir. In the first tables were there and formulas were there. Formulas. First one. First yeah. one direct assessment. Slides, tables were there, sir. Earlier one. Okay, go so back one, to the two, tables three, again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, force. Yes, I come back to table one. Not table no, one. Sir, yes. No, sir. Table one. Sir. Yeah, this one. There's some formulas. Next, next, sir. Next. Yes, this one. Below this. Sir. There are formulas below the table, sir. Uh, are you talking about the first scheme or second scheme? I talk, talked about two schemes. One we said is affiliating colleges. Other we said is a degree awarding issues. No, sir. This only in the CO attainment and PO attainments. How to calculate? Mm -hmm. Computation of CO and PO attainments. Is it from this particular things or some this other? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This, yes. this one. Yes, sir. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is what we have got. Sir. PO attainment is a there is a correlation there which we say is the correlation between what we are defined as the articulation matrix. Articulation matrix is corresponding to one course. K, how we have defined their correlation with the POs there. It's a highly correlated, I say three. It's a average correlated, I say two. And it's a very minor correlation there, it's a one. Now, based on this only, what we do is this correlation into this CO attained divided by three is your attainment corresponding to that particular PO. Sir, what is this three? Three is just a factor which we have defined because our values are varying from one to three. So that's what we are dividing. Oh. Well, right. And in the next table, there is uh, you are dividing by three by five. That's three by five is I tell you. Uh, I explain it to you. Yeah. yeah, three by five. What we got is K A. There is a direct assessment which we have calculated with the three. Mm -hmm. Either uh, there is a 
very strong correlation or low correlation or no, uh, little correlation. That is what we see. And where is we have made this particular indirect assessment tape uh, questions with five only. So that's why just to <coughs> scale it, you know, both the factors at the same level only, two, three only, we have made this by five. Okay, thank you. Okay. So for the, if the purpose of simplicity, when any institute want to have lesser interval means even for indirect integration instead of a scale of five, they want only three. So yeah, they, they can. can. This is possible. They can. They can. Yeah, yeah. Having more, for interval, the... having more interval will definitely be in a position to get better data. Yes. A, maybe Sir. in articulation matrix also, in case I can one like go to one to five, nobody stops her from there also. Correct. Correct. Can go. Right? Yes. Sir, can I interrupt? Like in Likert scale, generally we have uh, three, five, or seven or nine options. Based on our requirement, we can put as many as options and then we can map it, right, sir? Usually like, we say yes. uh usually we say scale of five, scale of three, scale of seven. But we usually don't say scale of four. Sir. Right? It is better that to your scaling scale definitions. Of. Because it's an odd scaling. That's what says. Statistics people say it is all scaling which we have to have. I, I think there are no no other question. Can some participant can some uh, answer? One one. No, I have a question, sir. Can I have one question? Uh, so far. Uh, I have a small query. Hello. Can you can you mute please the please the background noise please? And then, hello. Yeah, please. Hello. 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 I had a question. Hello. Yeah, Sir, if you are implementing the OB for the first year, so then what is the criteria for selecting the CO attainment targets? And uh, subsequent question is that uh, if uh, what should be the incremental, uh, I mean, change for the next year? Is there any criteria? Uh, no, this is a subjective based on the environment which you are there. How should you think of your attainments? Because usually it's based on the earlier year attainments. Because if I'll tell you, if you start designing this for all the three years in one go, you will face an issue. But in case you imbibe it into your own system there, then automatically this will work. Right, I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, indirect, so, indirect so, form of. Uh, just one, one last question, sir. If I am permitted to speak. Sure. Please ask. Yeah, sir. Uh, my question is very crisp, sir. In this indirect method of assessment, like this alumni survey, mm -hmm. sir, is there some minimum sample size that is being decided? I mean, how many alumni? No, no, there is no rule like this. A sample size is defined by movie or so. It is your own thing. A whichever you say is a reliable sample that you can use. Okay. And and uh, how how old alumni need to be you know used in this survey? Should no, there is no there is no restriction. It can be hundred year old also can be used there because alumni okay. alumni. All right, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, one one question is coming, sir. Uh, can we map this lecture anywhere if this lecture is followed by a short MCQ test? Okay. <laughs> Good question, huh? <laughs> there is a module in NBA. In learning practices, you don't book beyond syllabus. Under that, under that, you have some additional module as part of that. This lecture can be considered. But see, okay. that for that innovative, you must be in a position to make some COs, and then those COs should correspond to some COs. If it is so, you can always uh, consider that. So, uh, is it possible, sir? Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. That's the way. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the copy of this uh, PDF file, there you have uh, done calculations of formula, etc. 
uh, yeah. if you would if you would share uh, will uh, yeah yeah i'll just be i'll mail it to uh, uh, mail it to vishal uh, mail it to uh, vishal then you can have it from him okay. okay. sir uh, one last are you mailing it just now fine yeah sir uh, thank you so much professor so much like this oh thank you so much it professor huda it was nice interaction with all of you thank you I, so much very interactive session i had thank and you dear participants tomorrow morning tomorrow after uh, afternoon we have a session on how to ensure that project based learning will enhance the higher order thinking as still at the same time how to ensure that the curriculum if you have got an opportunity to design your curriculum so how to ensure that your curriculum is outcome oriented curriculum that is a lecture which professor bruna will be delivering today afternoon and tomorrow morning again professor sohan will be writing us that uh, how questions based on your syllabus you should design so that the mapping become easy and finally you can claim that my question is outcome oriented question so the entire philosophy of ob will go down into uh, not only into the teaching learning system also into assessment and evaluation and that is where if you if you practice them you need not to have any consultant the entire purpose of this workshop is to do away with the consultant bring all the teachers and make all the teachers as a consultant so that they can they can uh, first uh, follow the practices after institutionalizing it across an institution and then tell to the nba you may come any day i have applied and you may come any day because that is a culture in my institute that that uh, reason we are uh, uh, projecting and with that we have conducted this workshop thank you so much we'll meet at 145 please all the party okay thank you so much Yeah thank you professor Sovat please thank you so much okay